All right, so now we come to the last part of chapter six, the chemical senses. And uh, so this is again, sort of the process of transducing chemical signals into nerve, neural signals, excuse me. And so what are some of these chemical senses? Well, we have olfactory, the sense of smell, and we have gustatory, the sense of taste. And, um, and uh, these are both of these, um, I mean, all senses, but in particular, olfactory and gustatory are like have, can have really strong memory components with them. I thought you'd like some of these. Uh, let's see. Um, Jack Nicholson here. And uh, um, just thought these were fun. All righty. Okay, so starting with the olfactory system, highly sensitive in animals that have their nose or antenna near the ground to pick up chemical odorants, particularly this is my dog all the time. He just walks around with his nose to the ground and, and pounces. And so the olfactory receptor neurons, um, literally just, you know, simply described there, um, abbreviated to ORN. Um, these are include bipolar neurons in the epithelium in the nose. They have receptors for odorants similar to receptors for neurotransmitters, because they work similarly like that. And the fact that you sort of have it fit within a sort of a lock and key, like the, the chemical sense comes in and sort of activating the receptor. Dogs have to have about one to four billion ORNs, while humans have about 15 million. So just really clear putting in perspective how far down below our smell is than, than even the most impaired animal, and even the most impaired dog, excuse me. ORNs send signals to the cells in the olfactory bug and the olfactory bulb, excuse me, such as mutual cells that are selectively sensitive to different classes of orders. And these mitral cells send signals to the entorhinal cortices, amygdala, and piriform cortex. And the olfactory information, and, and um, this is where they're then going through their processing. And I, sorry, this was supposed to probably be a um, second um, bullet point here but the olfactory information does not actually pass through the thalamus. And so we'll see a little bit more about just, this is just sort of like walking through the basics of the process. And we'll see a little bit more on the next slides in terms, and also sort of like these, the, old, um, the mitral cells, um, these are just an example of other types of cells as well. <coughs> so here's the olfactory system starting over here with a fresh cup of morning coffee. So we have the path of inhaled air that is going up into the nose into, into the nasal um, conch. I'm actually not sure, sure how to pronounce that, sorry. And then once it travels through this, again, goes through sort of a number of things up here, right up here at the very top, this is the olfactory bulb and this nerve will lead to the olfactory tract. And right here is the olfactory epithelium. So these are these little cells here. Looks like they kind of hang down, you know? And um, and this is um, where the, um, the senses of smells would interact with these receptors. So here is a basic um, sort of uh, um, this in detail, which corresponds to this section. So here you have sort of the, the bone um, that um, um, the optic cracks come through here to kind of go off to the, um, to the olfactory tract, to the brain. And so then here is what would be below hand, sort of in the, <laughs> in more of the, the nose, particularly in the mucus of the nose. So here we have these places come down. Um, this is an olfactory gland. These are olfactory receptors right here. And these here at the end are their dendrites. So you can see here at the very bottom that you've got in this little bit of uh, mucus right here, you have the olfactory cilla. So these are probably going to be the little tiny pieces at the end that have the receptors. And um, and will that have the sort of the filla, like the, not the receptors, because this is all a receptor, but excuse me, it would have the, um, 
the little tiny like um, um, receptor um, uh, keyholes for some of the senses to kind of work through like a neurotransmitter. And so the smells sort of pass through here. And so these little factory cilla sort of, you know, like absorb this. And if, you know, activated sufficiently, you know, then they will have an action potential that will travel up here. And this is where you have these olfactory neurons that will branch with these neutral cells. And then these will shift to form the olfactory tract. And so here is an, a closer example of the olfactory epithelium, which is right in here. And so here you can just see what this sort of looks like in certain parts of this area, sort of right here with these tiny little films down here at the bottom. And all right. So this is what everything sits in. So basically similar sort of process, you should be noticing similarities in terms of sort of how these receptors are working at this point. But, you know, like they have specific, you know, um, um, elements, sort of specific um, parts on their dendrites. These, these the receptors are specifically designed, so they're not like regular neurons. Um, and that they each have these really key sort of identifying components um, of specifically being able to um, easily um, receive information on that their particular sense. And so they're all just really crafted. They're all really crafted for that. But then noticing that they have, they have um, distinct similarities, that they have distinct, that they have similarities as well. So, and all of them, this idea that these receptors that are receiving information are like physically or chemically sort of, you know, affected in some way. And they're then going to cause these downcating, these downstream, um, information flowing for processing in our brains. All right. Now our second is we have the taste, sensation, and perception. And so tastants, these are actually the chemicals that are associated with different flavors. And um, we have um, sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and humani, um, which is the taste of glutamate. There's actually, in the textbook, there's actually the more technical names. So you'll want to take a look at those. And then you have the, um, within how these taste and works is sort of you have these taste papillae. So this is our, our tongue right back here. And um, the very, you know, we have these taste buds sort of, you know, all over the place here. And, um, but then we have these particular sort of like, as you can see from this one right here, this is a circumvatile papilla. So it has a particular um, place back here. You have the fungiform papilla. These are some right here. So that we have different types of papilla all across our tongue for detecting different types of uh, flavors. And so all of these different types, they all have this sort of basic function of these sort of taste hairs, and little t taste pores and um and then this once these again this is sort of like these will um activate um and again kind of travel down into these you know these are the gustatory cells the information will travel down um, processing um downstream so these taste papilla they have bumps on the tongue several different types as you can see here the trenches around the papilla collect the, the saliva and the tastants. So you can see here within all of these, the little sort of papilla in here, but there's like all of these little areas for trying to catch the little, you know, the, again, these pieces up here for the taste pores, things kind of coming down into the areas around, you know, those grooves and, and the little bumps on the tongue. And the papillae, they contain the taste receptor cells, as in, as I said, and um, super tasters. So these individuals that, you know, tend to be also really negative to um, bitter flavors. Um, this, the textbook says they have more papillae and more, and, and that might be part of why they are more sensitive to bitter flavor. So um, I've thought of myself as a, as a super taster because I am really quite, similar I mean excuse me I am really quite sensitive to bitter flavors I kind of find them really yucky like I don't like the taste of beer at all and um but I don't somehow I don't think I'm a super taster because I just don't feel like I have more <laughs> or something or just other things that aren't so bitter anymore 
So, but you can actually go through and sort of test this on yourself by checking with certain paper and things like that if it's if it's a um, if you get a reaction to it that other people don't. Now, so here for once, what happens with the gustatory system because we've got our sensory information up here, but like again, like what's happening down here? What happens next with you know this um, the uh, um, the um, neuronal activations that sort of head in from these taste receptor cells. So these taste receptor cells appear to actually be quite long. And so you can see that they'll hear and that they then also come up. Um, and these are linked with these various, um, you have the facial nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve, the vagus nerve down here, and these taste receptors, this actually sort of the taste information is carried in several different cranial nerves. And there's a dedicated set of axon projections from the, thal the, from the thalamus um, project this information to the cortical taste areas that give us our conscious experiences of taste. And so, um, so we just like they travel along these additional um, uh, nerves, which is also um, if you have damaged any of these nerves or anything like that too, then you can lose aspects of your sense of taste and smell. Um, so this is this is generally how the information travels. You know, up here passes through sort of the the brainstem into this um, these areas right here where it looks like okay, here there's junctions. It's just a little hard to see. There's junctions, and then the information gets sent to the gustatory cortex where it's going to be processed in greater detail. So this is the basic pathway. So you should be sort of noticing just sort of similarities in terms of, you know, the sensory information processes from the receptors to whatever sort of, you know, sensory nerve um, and up into these brain regions where it's going to be processed and integrated. And so, um, and the details, again, it's really sort of the overall processes of these things and the de and the sort of the basics of those processes that you want to know to understand these, um, the main points of gustatory and olfactory processing. Now we've reached the end. So here's the key terms. I think I've got most of them set that I've reviewed. And so you guys are all set. Um, I will see you soon for chapter seven. This is recording stopped.